g'day guys. So we've decided to do a new Webasto hot water and heating video. Um, a couple of feedback items that we've had from a couple of customers is that it is a great system. It is sometimes a little bit hard to get your head around what, what it's doing, why it's doing something. Um, so we thought we'll give you a quick rundown. Um, we'll start with the technical side on what it is and the bit of the schematics behind how it heats the glycol tank. Um, we'll show you the new tank that we've installed um, to alleviate you running out of fuel. And then we'll come back and we'll show you exactly how to use the unit um, in a more, what we call user-friendly way, I suppose, um, using infinity modes instead of timers. So on the 2021 Kimberley Camper, uh, they have installed a Webasto diesel heating and hot water system uh, which is designed by Webasto, produced by Webasto over in Germany, and the model is a Thermotop Evo 5. Um, this unit is designed primarily um, for the European market for your high-end cars as a parking heater and a, and a radiator heater for those that live close to the autobahn in winter, fire this thing up wirelessly on a key fob, you know, having a coffee at breakfast, and by the time they jump in their car, um, their radiator is nice and warm, their engine is nice and warm, and so they jump out onto the autobahn to a buck sixty and they don't do any damage to their vehicle. Um, the way that Kimberley are running it in the camper is a fantastic way, it's quite an ingenious way, but they're using this radiator system, or a glycol tank they call it, um, through a water exchange and a air exchange uh, to either heat water for your shower or your basin, your washing up system there, um, or for an internal cab heater. Um, it's a fantastic uh, way of doing it, and it sort of kills two birds with one stone. So the way that the Webasto heats up the glycol tank, as soon as you fire it up, it fires into full mode. Um, the full mode will heat the glycol. Now this is the temperature of the glycol tank I'm talking about. Uh, it'll heat the glycol to 80 degrees. Uh, once the temperature sensor sensors 80 degrees of the glycol tank, um, the heater will drop back into what they call as an energy saving partial load mode. Uh, this energy saving partial load mode uh, will continue to heat the glycol if you're not robbing energy out of the system and it does it up to about 84 degrees. Once you hit 84 degrees um, in the glycol tank, the uh, unit will go into a control break mode. Um, it's no longer heating the glycol, it's 84 degrees, it's hot enough. It stays in this control brake mode until it goes, until the, the temperature decreases to a predefined setting. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'm pretty sure it's a between 60 and 65 degrees. Um, then it fires back up into an energy, you know, your partial load energy saving mode. Um, it's a fantastic system. So when you're running it on infinity mode and you're running it all night, um, it's not running all night, it's available to run all night, if you sort of understand what I mean like having instant hot water at home on, 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 a, on, a, on a normal house. It's available to be run, but it's not running all the time. So that's the technical side of things. So we'll jump around the other side and we'll show you the new diesel tank that we've installed. All right, so now we're over on the uh, driver's side going box. Uh, this is where the 2.2, 2.6 litre tank used to sit um, up on the wall of the trailer there. Um, so we have a 18 and a half litre usable aluminium tank, which is uh, designed and built by Metallion. They used to be in G-Bung, they're up there at uh, Brendale now. Sorry it's not, Tom, the trailer's heading away tomorrow morning on a hire. Um, with the fuel line sitting on the outside uh, here, if you can see, a bit hard to see at night time, but the fuel line there is 16 litres at the top of the gauge. It's about 18 and a half litres. If you fill it up with about an inch spare below the filler port, there's also a breather port on the right hand side and there's a drain port down on the left hand, rear uh, bottom left hand side. The feeder line is off the back, it's all protected, it goes up through the standard hose, um, into the filter, through to the pump, and then down to the unit. The unit sits at the back of the going box. Uh, there and the glycol, the water exchange is also in this box, comes out through the glycol lines, through the glycol feeder tank, and then down through these two lines in the floor, which take you to the air exchange in the trailer. Um, we'll duck back around the other side, we'll fire the unit up, and we'll give you an example of how to uh, initialize the system. Alrighty, so we're back over on the passenger side, the main kitchen area of the trailer, 
um, and you've got four switches, lights, water pump, hot water, and the uh, fridge fan. And so when you rock up to camp, the three on the left, the lights, water pump, and hot water will most probably be off. And the fridge fan, which are just the little extractor fans at the back of the boxes, um, that'll be on. Uh, you can turn those off when you're leaving this box open. Um, you may hear it very, very slightly at night time if you've got fantastic hearing. Um, I don't hear it, but my wife does. So um, when we power the hot water up, it's always good to look at the screen at the top. You can just press a button, it turns on, and it says it's just coming up on 7 o'clock at night, Friday the 27th of August. Um, so the very first thing you do is turn the hot water switch on. Remember, this switch here is a, like a circuit breaker in your house. It's not the on and off switch. So you're basically powering the unit up. Um, it first asks for the day of the week. So we just said it's Friday. So this little wheel here, we'll scroll this to the right where it says Friday. And then we'll press it to execute that day. And the time, well, we'll just make it seven o'clock at night. So we'll roll it all the way to the right until it says seven o'clock. And then we'll go enter, enter. The unit is now set and it thinks it's seven o'clock at night on Friday. So the very first thing that uh, we need to do there is we'll scroll all the way to the right to settings. If you keep going right, it doesn't go any further. We'll enter that to get into the settings menu. We'll scroll all the way to the right again, and we will reset the unit. Enter, enter. So the unit resets. What this does is it, is it clears all the fault codes in its short-term memory, because as I mentioned before, being an auto unit, it's, it runs off the fuel tank of the car, or the diesel tank of the car. They make them both in petrol and diesel models. I and mean, it runs off the mains power of the battery of the car. So it's not designed to be turned off. It's not designed to be turned off mid-cycle and it's not designed to run out of fuel. Either of these three things cause fault codes. And every time we turn it off using the main switch here and we transport the trailer somewhere, it throws in a TEB fault code, which we have to clear. Hence why we go and clear the fault code to start with. So now it's all programmed, there'll be no fault codes. You can check by going to the settings menu and then we'll scroll all the way to the right and then we'll come back one, which says error information. We can execute that and it says it's okay. Here ribbon. So there's no errors in the system. We can scroll all the way back to the left, which will give us the back menu. We'll enter that and we're back in the main menu. So we, this is ventilation. We don't use ventilation and we don't use timers. The only setting that you'll ever need is heating mode. So if it's seven o'clock at night, like it is now, and say we're just about to go to bed, and I might need it at between say 10 p.m. and six in the morning, we're going to put it on infinity mode. The tank's full, it's not gonna run out of fuel. Um, it just came back from a 10 day high and they used half a tank of diesel. So about nine liters of diesel. So well, we wanna enter a heating mode. We wanna run it for its max duration. And this max duration, I assume will just continue to run until it runs out of fuel. So that'll be a very, very, very long time. So we'll execute that. It flashes green, it gives you the infinity symbol, and it says it's gonna continue running and heating the system until you ask to turn it off. We'll come back in a second, um, and we'll show you how to, how to turn it off properly. So we don't turn it off with a switch, and there is a way that the unit does do a cool down mode. There is a process that goes through when it turns off. Uh, so we'll show you how to activate that on the system um, shortly. So we'll duck around the other side and we'll, once the unit sort of fires up in a minute or two, we'll show you what's happening on the other side of the trailer. Alrighty, so we're back around the driver's side going box. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is that you can hear a little tick, 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 tick sound. It's uh, from the fuel pump there, uh, pumping fuel down. Um, and you can hear the uh, heater system is running there in the back box. A little bit loud, it's on full noise at the moment, obviously trying to heat that glycol up as uh, as quickly as it can. Um, and besides the going box is open as well. You can run this unit with the box closed. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the lines are starting to get warm. The glycol tank is starting to get warm. That's probably about 30 or 40 degrees now. Um, that will get quite hot. So when you're running the system, again, just be careful if you've got anything leaning up against the system. Um, it, it, it won't melt anything, but you've just got to be aware that this unit here does get really hot. Um, you've also got the exhaust coming out just underneath where the pole storage is, and that, that, that's as close as I can hold my hand without burning it. So with if you've got kids, you've just got to be aware of that as well. Uh, so that's the system running. Again, when it reaches that 80 degrees, 
um, in the glycol line. It'll go into its energy saving power mode um, and it is very, very, very quiet. You won't even hear it running from inside the camper um, at all. So we'll duck around the other side and we'll show you how to uh, finish the cycle as if you've woken up in the morning. Alrighty, so we're back at the unit again um, and it's taken about 11 minutes or so for the unit to heat the glycol up to its uh, 80 degrees and the unit's ended its um, energy saving partial load mode. Um, it'll eventually turn itself off there if it exceeds 84 degrees and if the temperature outside is cold enough it may not reach at 84 degrees in which case it'll just stay in partial load mode all night. Depending whether you're using the heater inside, if you're using the heater inside it won't reach 84, it'll slowly die down to 60-65 degrees in which case it'll fire back up at full noise to heat that glycol back up and it'll probably do that every about four hours or so if you're running it at night time. Um, there's several ways to shut the unit down. Um, the, uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to turn the hot water switch off. So when you rock up to camp, you turn that on, you initialize the system and you leave it on. And just before you drive away to uh, go to your next campsite or bring the camper back, that's when you'll turn it off. So the first way to turn the unit off is you can grab the round dial again and scroll it to the left it's got infinity you can scroll it to the left it's got one hour and if you go keep going all the way to the left it'll have 10 minutes there so if you want to say okay i'm going to do the dishes or you know whatever you want to let it run for another 10 minutes and shut down you can do that when it's in infinity mode like this the other way to turn the unit off and put it into its cool down cycle mode is just to press the green button once now it is cooling down, it'll, it'll do its cool down, it won't actually allow you to fire the unit back up again until, it, um, until the cool down cycle is, is completed. That'll take a couple of minutes and when the cool down cycle is complete, this unit will go dark and the light will turn off from being a white light to being no light at all. So they're the two ways to turn the unit off from infinity mode. Um, what we'll do is we'll let it cool down, we'll let it shut itself down and then I'll show you how to turn the unit on um, and activate the unit if you just want, say, an hour and a half or so of, uh, of hot water available. Again, um, the hot water is on. It is initialized, so it's all ready to go. It's just not currently running in cycle. The little light is not on. It's uh, indicating the unit is off at the moment. So to turn the unit on, when it's in a configuration like this, just press the button once. It wakes the unit up from its sleep mode. And say you want to just use... Uh, um, some hot water say for an hour now the maximum you can set it at in a manual mode running is an hour um, unless you select infinity mode but in this case someone wants to have a shower or someone wants to do the dishes um, we can set it for an hour so again on heating mode we'll press enter instead of max duration we'll scroll back to an hour and we'll select enter and enter and now the unit is running for an hour and will automatically turn off in one hour's time so that, that's how simple it is again if you want to turn the unit off earlier you can scroll the wheel back to the left hand side um, say it was like okay I didn't want it for an hour maybe I want it for half an hour so I just grab the wheel scroll it back to half an hour enter now the unit's programmed to run for half an hour and vice versa um, the, the smallest number you can go there is 10 minutes so say so we'll set it uh, we'll give it a, just a run for 20 minutes um, so now the unit will run for 20 minutes at the end of 20 minutes so it'll provide 20 minutes of hot water available at the end of 20 minutes again it does its cooling down cycle um, so 20 minutes will take it to just on eight o'clock so by about six seven minutes past eight um, it'll complete its cooling down cycle and the unit will be off uh, won't be running and the light will go from green uh, to white to nothing um, all while leaving the hot water switch on like I said don't turn that off until uh, you decide to either leave the campsite you're at or uh, bring the camper trailer back. Uh, we do have a, if you've, there's a lot of information in there, but we do have a, um, a quick user guide. Um, it's just located down in the little pantry. There's also one in the front going box there as well. Um, on the unit, very simple, awesome unit. It works really, really well. Um, German unit, you just have to use it the way the Germans have designed it to be used. That's all. Alrighty, fantastic. Have fun, guys.